introduce you to CSS, I will also be explaining the CSS rule set. By rule set, I mean the syntax or the way the CSS structure is put together. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS describes how HTML elements should be displayed. CSS is what is referred to as a style language and not a programming language. CSS is the code you use to style your web page. Just like a stylist can style your hair, you can use CSS to style HTML elements. A typical example would be if you wanted to style all the paragraph elements on your HTML page, if you want to turn the content or the text into red, this is how you would write the CSS. So the P will indicate the actual selector, which is the HTML element you're trying to style. The color will be the property that you are trying to apply. And the blue will be the value for the property that you're trying to apply. So what this syntax is saying, or this rule set is saying, I want to make all the paragraph element blue. Let's take a look at a typical CSS rule set. So the whole structure you can see on the screen is referred to as a rule set, but often called rule for short. So let me quickly run through the syntax here. So when you want to apply CSS to an HTML element, the very first thing you do is you have to specify the element and that is referred to as a selector. So in this case, the P here is the selector, which is the HTML element I want to apply styling to. Next thing you need to do, you need to put in an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. Very important, you have the curly braces and inside the curly braces is where you actually write the CSS. So it contains of different parts. So the color here, you can apply any property. The color basically is just one of many properties that you can use to style HTML elements. In this illustration, I am styling the paragraph element with the color property. That means I'm going to change the color of all elements that I've got the P tag. Okay, so the color is referred to as a property and then you use a colon. It's very important. You have to separate the property from the property value with a colon. You can see this colon here. Once you've indicated the property, then you have to give it a value. And this is known as the property value. In this example, I'm styling the paragraph tag, which is this P here, which is a selector. I'm changing the color property to purple. Okay, so that's how you do it. And when you finish, you have to end it with a semicolon. Semicolon is very important because it tells the CSS rule set that this is the end of this declaration. So the entire thing here from the color property to the property value is called a declaration. So these are the various parts of a CSS rule set. Before you can apply CSS to an element, you need to consider all these various parts. In this illustration, I've just got a single rule here. You can have multiple. For example, I could decide to add more properties. The color is just one property. I could add a size, which is another property, and then give the size a value. So there are different properties you can apply to an HTML element to style it. So the key points to note here is that 
don't forget the semicolon. If you forget the semicolon, the styling will not work. It will not be applied. So don't forget that. And also don't forget to separate the property that you're trying to style from the value. So property and value must be separated with a colon. And don't forget the opening and curly braces. Your property and the value must be contained in between the curly braces. So you have to start off with a selector being the HTML element you want to start. You can style many, any selectors. You can also style multiple selectors at a time by separating each one with a comma. But in this illustration, just to make things, keep things simple, I'm just using one selector. In this video, I explained what CSS means and also illustrated how a CSS rule set works. Thank you for watching and bye for now. I will show you the various ways you can apply CSS to an HTML document. There are three main ways you can apply CSS to an HTML document. You can apply CSS externally, you can apply CSS internally, and also apply CSS inline. I'm going to illustrate with a basic example of how you apply CSS using these three methods. I'm going to start with an external CSS. An external CSS is basically CSS that is referenced from an external file. So to begin, I want to create a CSS file. So inside my project here, I've already got a folder called style sheets. So I'm going to click on that folder. And inside that folder, I'm going to create a new file. Just right click and click on new file. And I'll just give the file a name. I'll call it my style dot CSS and just press enter. You can see now it's showing us style sheet, my style dot CSS. So this file now is a CSS file. Any content I write in here is going to be CSS. So the example I want to do, I want to style all the paragraph tags. So this is a paragraph tag here. This is also a paragraph tag. If I click on my index.html, you see that I've got a P tag here, which is this one. And the bottom here, I've got P tag here, which is referencing to that. So if I click on my style sheet again, this is my style.css. So in order to create a style that will make all the elements, all the paragraph elements, a different color, you start with the selector. So P will be the selector because that's the element I'm targeting to apply styling to. Next, you need curly braces, opening and closing. You do enter to separate. And in between the curly braces is where I will apply the styling. So what I want to do, the property I want to style is the color. So I write color and then you must put a colon followed by the value I want to give the color. I'm going to make it blue and then a semicolon. So that's basically all the CSS. So I'm just going to save that. Click save all. So now I've got a CSS. So I need to find a way to reference the CSS from my index.html file. And the way to do that is via a link element. So I have now added the link element here. So this is it. You've got link. That's the name of the element. And then you need the href attribute. I forgot to put a closing quote there. That's why the rest of the text is highlighted. So if you notice here, the href is basically an attribute. And the value is style sheet, which is this folder. It's referencing the location of the style sheet. And the name of the style sheet is called mystyle.css, which is this. And then next we've got this rel attribute. The rel attribute defines 
the relationship that the linked resource has to the document from which it is referenced. So here we're referencing the style sheet and the type, this is another attribute which indicates what type of document the style sheet is and the value is a text, it's a text and slash CSS file. So this is how you would reference an external CSS inside your HTML document. So I'm referencing this CSS file from my HTML document and it's important to know that you must place it in the head section. The reason for this is that before the page loads you want any CSS that's available to be applied as the page loads. So if I save this, save all and refresh, you can see here now my paragraph has turned blue because if I click it on my CSS here, I've given it a property of blue. That's how this came about and I've referenced that using the link element which must be placed in the head section of your HTML document. So the external CSS is the most effective way of applying CSS. You can imagine if you have a website that has several hundred pages, you can, you can apply CSS just from one file. So that's the benefit of using CSS from an external file. And if you want to make changes, you know you only have to go to one file and make the changes on that file and it will replicate across the relevant pages. Next, I want to show you how to add an internal CSS. So what I've done, I've commented out the external CSS reference so that I can show you how to add an internal CSS. And you do that using the style tag. So you type in style, use the style element. So with all elements, you should have an opening and closing. So I'm just going to tab to separate the style element. And in between the style element, element is where you apply the actual CSS rule. So I'll start with the element I want to style, which is a paragraph. And then I do a curly braces, opening and closing. And I select the property I want to style, which is a color. You add a colon and then give it a value and then semicolon to end. You can see here it's already changed. All right, so that's basically how you add a style to a HDL element internally inside the document. This is not a very effective way. If you've got a tiny document, it's okay. But if you've got uh, multiple web pages, always best to go for an external CSS. You can imagine if you had to change all the styling in the HTML document. Also, it makes the HTML document a bit messy. So it's always good to separate the CSS if possible. So that's an example of an internal CSS. So next, I'm going to show you how to apply an inline CSS. To show you the illustration, I'm going to target this element here. This H1 here is going to be my selector. So when you are applying CSS in line, you have to do it in the opening element. So I want to make this element here, this H1, I'm going to make the text red. So inside the opening, I just do a space to tab and then I type in the word style followed by and equals to and in quotes I have to type in the value the property I want to style so it's going to be a color and the value is going to be red all right and then when you're done you put a closing quote and then you close you can see it's turned red already. So when you are using an internal CSS, you have to add it in the opening element. You can see here, I've done it inside the opening element and it uses the style as an attribute. So this now, this style becomes an attribute where the values is the property you're styling and the value for the prop and the property value. So this is a property 
this is a property value so you can see here it has reflected but very very sparingly you should use internal CSS you can imagine if you have to change CSS in, in line or internally it will take a lot of time so it is rarely used um, just in very rare cases do people use inline CSS for example inline CSS will override the external or internal so if you specified a different color inside the external and you change the color in line the inline will supersede the external but very rarely do people use inline styling I've just shown you here just for illustration purposes what people use what the professional use and the proper way to do it is to use an external CSS style sheet and define all your CSS inside that external file and then it's easy to just make the changes on just the one file so to conclude I've shown you how to apply CSS externally internally and inline and the most effective way is external so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of my inline here just to bring my document back to how it was. Okay, you can see it's returned back and I'm also going to get rid of the internal CSS. I'm going to remove the comment from the external CSS and that should be it. So I now have my external CSS. I'm going to leave that link there. So if I want to add more CSS, all I need to do is go into the CSS file here and just add all my CSS. So you can see it's very effective to do it this way rather than internal or inline. So that's it for this video on applying CSS. Thank you and bye for now.